What is up, YouTube? We're here today. I'm going to show you guys the Dell Antiflex 3010. Now, uh, got this system from the junkyard, uh, well back in November. Uh, this is one of the Series 4 Dell Antiflex uh, towers. Obviously, they did come in the same exact form factors as the Series 3, so you got desktop. A mini tower, small form factor, and then ultra small form factor. This one you're looking at is a desktop form factor. And I think you would recall it as, I think, the second in the uh, 3000 series line. Well, first starting out with the 390, then comes to this. The Series 4 chassis was introduced with the Octoplex 960, which at the time was still BTX. Then later switched it back to ATX, starting with the 390 and 790. So without further ado, let's begin. So on the front, we got the power button and the Octoplex 3010 designation. The optical drive, two USB 2.0 ports, and then headphone and microphone ports. And then you're not going to be able to see it, but th those will be your indicators for hard drive and network. And I think you might also find the diagnostic lights. The Dell logo is right here. And then the stickers for the Windows 7 and Intel Core i5 as well. And then on the back, I kind of noticed something interesting here. Uh, oh, that sun is glaring out, unfortunately. We have, and I'm going to hold on to that. We have six USB 2.0 ports, Ethernet. And then down here, we have HDMI, something that you will not see on an Octoplex so these days. Uh, mostly, it will have DisplayPort, which is pretty much their business class version of HDMI. And then we have VGA, and then three audio ports, which includes microphone, line in, and line out. And then those will be where you put in your PC cards, which should have PCIe X16 and PCIe X1. And then right here is going to be your power supply. And then the side will have a vent. The right will have a vent here. Left side is pretty much the bottom side if you had it in that orientation. And then the top will have your service tag and your Windows 7 proto key. So let's go ahead and uh, get to the specs. Excuse the mess here, unfortunately. So this one, and this, and the camera's not even focusing well. This one has a 3.2 gigahertz Intel Core i no Core i5 at 3470. It's a third gen Ivy Bridge processor uh, that released in 2012. This one has 4 gigs of DDR3 RAM and also has a 500 gig hard drive. It's SATA 3 to be exact. It's the 3.5 inch drive. And it's running Windows 10 Pro version 22H2 64 bit. So, yeah, meaning this is the final update for Windows 10 to be ever released. And it is actually compatible with Windows 10. Now, this model came out in 2013. In fact, it says May 21st, 2013. So, making it one of the newest of the third gen before they, well, not really the newest in terms of, you know, the design. They obviously did have an updated uh, model, the 3020, which I think had a fourth gen processor. So, yeah. What I'm going to do now is. I'm going to go ahead and set it up. Since the TV does have HDMI, I'm going to plug it in directly through my TV, which I'm using for the Acer Aspire to edit videos. So without further ado, let me go ahead and set it up, and I'll be back. All right, so I got the Octoplex all settled. So let's go ahead and uh, boot it up. I'm not going to bother doing a smoke test for any reason. I have two. So let's go to the system information. Uh, as you can see, 4 gigs of RAM, like I said earlier. 
Intel Core i5 3470, and then uh, it has one megabyte of L2 cache. Uh, as you see, uh, the clock speed is 3.2 gigahertz. Now for the hard drive, it says it here. So it is a Seagate hard drive. It has Intel HD Graphics 2500. Now the RAM, it doesn't really show, oh, here we go, 1600 megahertz, so. See, the day and time got reset, you know. But, the CMOS battery, unfortunately, is shot, unfortunately, but not planning on using it for any reason. So, let me go ahead and put the uh, date here. It is January 14th, 2024. It is 10... 22 nope okay let me go ahead and do it off camera so that I can set the day and time and also uh, change the uh, mode to UEFI so let me go and do that so I'll be back all right I got the boot mode all changed so now it's in UEFI mode so now it should boot into Windows 10 uh, without any issues so, uh, just to let you know, uh, it could be quite difficult to set up at first. So, we're going to go ahead and boot into Windows 10. I'm also going to grab the uh, mouse pad. See, we're booting into Windows 10. Like I said to full native, I'm running off of the JVC uh, TV so that I can demonstrate this thing. Okay, so many icons haven't moved uh, because of the uh, resolution, so that's pretty much normal in some occasions. But here we are. Let me check the volume is working perfectly. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go to system. I'm going to type in about this PC. As you can see, uh, like it says, the Intel Core i5 3470, 4 gigs of RAM, it's running Windows 10 64 bit. So, yeah, for the graphics, let's go ahead and go to display settings, advanced display settings, and then we can go to properties. As you can see, it's the Intel HD Graphics 2500. Uh, 32 megabytes of dedicated video RAM and making the shared system memory 1,760 megabytes, making a total of 1,792. So now let's go ahead and run some programs. Uh, so let's start with LibreOffice. Actually, I should have just launched it through the taskbar. Go ahead and write a, let's go ahead and click on Writer Document to open up LibreOffice Writer. Yep, I implemented a new plan I, I actually made. So, type in, hello. So, I'm going to bold it, italicize it, underline it, strike through, and make the size to like 96. Boom. Here we go. Let's go ahead and not save that. Go and run Microsoft Edge. I put it in dark mode. So I'm running Edge 120. Then Google Chrome. I also have it running Chrome 120. There it is. Chrome 120. And then I also put Opera on it. I put Opera 105. 
another Chromium based browser. So here it is. Let's go to about Opera. Here it is. It is now called Opera 1. And then Firefox. I'm running Firefox 120. So let's go about Firefox. Here it is, Firefox 120. And I'm also going to launch VLC. I have VLC 3.0.20 on this thing. Which is pretty much the latest version of VLC at the time of recording. So here it is, VLC Media Player. I also did install WizTree 4.16. So now, let's go ahead and scan it. As you can see, uh, boom, we got some scanning. I'm running 4.16. Let's go to Specky so we can give you a detailed look. Windows 10 Pro, we already knew that. It's going to let it load, and then after that, we can go ahead and go through the whole thing. So CPU, like it says, an Intel Core i5-3470 Ivy Bridge. It can boost up to 3.6 gigahertz. The RAM uh, is using one stick of DDR3 RAM from Hyundai PC3-120-800. And then for the motherboard, well, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Graphics, like it says, the Intel HD Graphics 2500. Hard drive is, like I said, is a Seagate hard drive. An optical drive, it is a PLDS optical drive. And then the audio is just Intel HD audio, and I think it's also Realtek. But of course, it's using Intel Display Audio right now, so. And then for the network, it's using the Realtek a Gigabit Ethernet controller, so there you go. I do have control panel pinned for a time like this, so let's go ahead and go to programs and features to show you the rest. So I got 7-Zip, CCleaner, Defragler, Google Chrome. I also have LibreOffice, Microsoft Edge, with Firefox, Opera, Specky, VLC, and Westry. I could have just showed you 7-Zip. I have actually gotten 7-Zip 23.01. So... There you go. There's not much I'm going to show you guys in terms of the software. Like I said, I have migrated it to a new plan that, like I said, I made. So, pretty much what this plan is all about is pretty much using just free open source or freeware. It's the type of software that I use. Uh, that's pretty much what I got installed. So, yeah, honestly, uh, the Octoplex can handle Windows 10 perfectly, so there you have it. So let me go ahead and uh, end the video now, so let's get to the conclusion. So in conclusion, is it worth it? Well, if you did replace the CMOS battery, then... That will be a definite yes, because uh, it is a third gen, though you can't run Windows 11, obviously, but at least uh, you still be able to run Windows 10 fully up to date until uh, the end of support day in October of next year. So, I would say yes, uh, you can upgrade to an SSD if you like. Like, uh, it is SATA 3 base, so you're definitely going to get a better performance if you actually did upgrade it to an SSD and you can even put in a low profile graphics card if you ever wanted it to have it so there you go now about that new plan I made uh, uh, that I just mentioned uh, like I said it uses free and open source software that mainly consists of LibreOffice as a replacement for a Microsoft Office and I'm totally loving uh, LibreOffice so far. I have already 
uh, made a letter uh, on on my HP stream recently, and and I actually deployed it. So this migration is kind of going very well on what the plan I just made. Uh, as far as it goes, it's pretty much doing well. So, so uh, I'm going to be retiring uh, Microsoft Office, uh, at least on new installations. Though that I buy from yard sales or find it at junkyards or on the curb or whenever I buy it. That, that does include Microsoft Office. I will continue using Office, but despite that, we're doing the mi I'm doing the migration to LibreOffice. So there you go. Well, I and the Autoplex uh, it's one of my first uh, Series Four Dell Autoplex machines. So there you have it. So that was it, folks. So thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to hit the subscribe button and also follow me on X at Ruben. Ruben Aparicio 17 and also follow me on Instagram at Ruben Transit Fans. So that was it for the review of the Dell Octoplex 3010. So I'll see you next time.